Hello and welcome to the class of contact and non-contact forces. So I'll just start that up here. Okay. Um, so I'm Laura Luce to introduce myself. Um, this is a video about contact and non-contact forces, key stage three. Um, it goes into a, a little bit of um, practice for GCSE as well, but this is um, aimed at key stage three. Okay, so let's look at the learning aims. So we've got an overview of what contact and non-contact forces are. Number two, an explanation of the different contact and non-contact forces, including magnetism, gravity and friction. And examples of questions involving forces with live answers. It just means I'm going to go through them with you. OK, so we've got straight in there, we've got two, two diagrams. OK, so these are, these are magnets it's showing here. So these two diagrams show contact and no, uh, a contact force and a non-contact force. So we've got two magnets attracting, so two opposite poles attracting, uh, and two similar or like poles repelling. And you've got a book on the table being slid along. Okay, so you've got a book sliding along. So think about which diagram shows a contact force and which shows a non-contact force. Okay, so let's think about that. Okay, so first, the easiest thing to think about is that are the magnets touching? Okay, you think, well, no, they don't have to touch each other to make an effect. So you know that you get a fridge magnet and you put it near the fridge, you know that you can feel the magnetism before it actually touches each other. So it's a non-contact force. That's actually as simple as, as it is. Um, with the book, it has to be touching the table, the friction. So if you push the book, that you'd feel like a resistance to the pushing and that's friction. Okay, We've got a few different examples here. So yeah, going over contact forces. So it'd be something is con in contact with something, it's touching it, okay? So contact forces, where uh, it's a bit like some people say contact sport, isn't it? A non-contact sport, the contact sport, you may, may physically touch other persons like rugby or something like tackle someone. A non-contact, something like um, netball, we're not actually supposed to touch the other person, you're supposed to pass the ball without touching. So you may think of it like that. Okay, so contact, yet yeah, forces where objects are physically touching. Non-contact are forces where objects are physically separated. Okay, so yeah, they don't touch. That's the easy way of saying that. So we've got a few scenarios here. We've got the, the friction, the magnets, uh, someone putting a block along. Okay, this is tension in the rope. Okay, so I'm going to introduce something here, which is if you, it, it's like called a normal force. Okay, this is a new word. So yeah, the normal force is perpendicular. So that means at right angles to the surface in contact. Okay. So you'll find out soon that then you'll get forces in pairs. Okay, so uh, gravity is pulling the, the block or box down and from the table is actually pushing it up. Okay, so that's called the normal force or normal contact force. And it's always at right angles, so it always opposes it. OK, I've got um, a classic thing where someone rubbed a balloon on their hair and it's sort of stuck to them. So you may remember what that's called, you may not. OK, so so you think about it being attracted. Does the, the hair touching there, but does it have to touch to attract it? Um, parachuting of a plane, you've got air resistance. That's the force we're talking about there. Magnets again, and you've got a falling object. So we're going to talk about them one by one. OK, so. Ooh, Go back, sorry, reveal something to you. Let's type in something. Okay, so we've got contact force. Okay, so this is, well, we've got friction, but I'll write it again. Friction. Okay. So contact force. So they are in contact. So that, as again, that's written, but that's the normal, the normal force or the normal contact force, sometimes it's known as. Non contact force. Right, so. This is called the electrostatic force. Electro, you may know it's just static. We think, oh, I've got a static shock. Okay, so it's electrostatic. So it's a little particle on a balloon get rubbed off called electrons. Okay, and it attracts your and it attracts your hair by the electrostatic force. The so contact force, that's air resistance. Yeah, I know it's written there, let's write it again. Air resistance is caused by the air particles hitting you. So that's a contact force because the air particles are actually hitting you. Okay, it's put like if you ride a bike quite fast, that you'll feel the air resistance on you. Contact force is magnetism. So this is magnets. Okay, that's how you look on a fridge. Contact force, this is tension. So if you pull something tight, like a rope, 
Okay, it's tension force, uh, non-contact force. This is actually representing gravity. Okay, yeah, it's a very big subject, isn't it? Because the reason why the objects fall is because of gravity. So that the um, Earth, actually the whole Earth, attracts something falling. Okay, so you're attracted by the force of gravity, which is non-contact. Because if you if you're not a hot air balloon, you're still being pulled towards the Earth, even if you're not touching it. I guess well, it's good to have a hot air balloon there. You don't actually have to, because a lot of the time people are sort of walking around on the Earth's surface and we think gravity acts for you. But you think about it, if you're even in the, an aeroplane or a hot air balloon, you're still being attracted by gravity. So gravity is a non contact force. Okay, so, so um, obviously you like to do it on your, on your um, own. So put the forces in the correct area. So it's a good thing to, um, to force this yourself, okay, and to. Um, to put these into the right category. So going back and looking and listening, if you want to, um, at the slide before about where to put these things. Okay, so just have a, you have a quick <laughs> few seconds here just to, um, to pause it and do it your, and yourself. Obviously you can pause this. Okay, so you could have paused it and copied it. So um, I'll continue. So I will do it, we'll go over it now. So contact force and non-contact force, the so gravitational. Okay, we use that as non-contact. Friction, so things have to touch. Okay, so it's a particle. So let's say two, well, I tell people to put the two hands together and rub their hands. Okay, and you can feel that that goes of resistance, hasn't it? And actually, hands actually even heat up because the particles actually rub together in your hands. So that is a contact. We've been contacting it. Air resistance is actually contact because the air particles have to touch. Electrostatic non-contact because if your hair is to be attracted to that balloon it doesn't actually have to touch it first of all it must be attracted magnetic non-contact you see two magnets can attract to repel tension oh contact okay because it has to actually be pulling it physically normal contact again something has to be actually on something for normal contact okay so that's the answers there so let's um let's present okay so forces between objects are a little bit more technical now. Okay, so forces between objects are actually Newton's third law of motion. So we're actually doing some of Newton's laws of motion here. So um, as, as he stated, whenever two forces, sorry, two objects interact, the forces they exert on each other are equal and opposite. So that's good, equal and opposite. So um, we've got two people here pulling on a rope. They've got roller skates on so that um, it helps us to understand just about the pulling and not about the friction on the floor. Okay, so it says, why is nobody winning this tug of war? The diagram only shows the people exerting a pulling force on the rope. What well, is another force that is equal and opposite to this force? Okay, so they're showing just the people pulling, but there's also the force tension, isn't there? If you remember, let's go back a little bit. Okay, tension acts these ways. So, if we draw in the force of tension on there, let's insert, um, so I need to get that menu down, the shapes, so I have an arrow, okay, so you've got force here, and you've got, let's copy the arrow, copy, paste, okay, I need to go the other way around, let's do it with a less Excel here. Okay, so that's the force of tension we're we'll putting that way as well. So if the people are both not moving, okay, not winning, they're both pulling with equal forces. Okay, so we'll probably think about that. Oh, I'll start from the beginning. Both pulling with equal forces there. So the other force is tension. And they're not winning because they're both pulling with equal force. Okay. So yeah, more detail on this. So in physics, forces acting in equal and opposite directions to each other on an object are called interaction pairs. Okay, so interaction pairs, they're represented by two arrows, a pair pointing in opposite directions. We've got a tractor pulling a car, so pull of rope on a car equals pull of car on rope. So if the, the um, rope is staying taut, so we've got the tension again there, that the pull of the rope on the car and the car on the rope, so this is friction, okay, are going to be equal, okay. 
So this is putting forward, and obviously, um, so to actually pull this forward, yeah, the mud in the tractor has to be greater than the mud in the car. So the tractor is designed so it's actually creating a lot of friction here, isn't it? So it's got these big tires with little like grooves in them, so that it can grip onto the mud. So someone's probably driven into the um, also in snow and things and things like that. You see, so that's a good idea. So you might ask you things like that about um, what sort of tires would you need in the mud or in snow? Okay, so and you do have a big a wide area and groove to create more friction. So someone could have driven in um, into the mud and got stuck and need a tractor to pull them out with its bigger 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 wheels. Okay, so interesting um, interesting questions. So it's a photograph of an airliner's jet engine. So um, I've all seen a plane, okay. <laughs> In, in, even if, if you're not in real life, seen on the film. So when a fuel burns, hot exhaust gases are forced backwards out of the engine. Okay, explain why this creates a forward thrust. So let's just draw some arrows here. Okay. So let's uh, draw some arrows. We've got shape, an arrow from before. Okay, so that's the force. Um, that's the force going backwards. So what I guess is a force backwards out of the engine. So that's the engine force going backwards. Okay. Let's put that text box. So um, that's the um, direction of the fuel. So so gas um, force backwards. burning of fuel okay. remember though if we, when we have a force we have false pairs always a pair of forces you know, we get false acting on its own there's always pairs of forces so there's a, there's a pair and it's, and it's opposite so we're going this way okay so a bit of a Thicker line, might not take it a bit thicker as well, so we can kind of see it. We've got to see it that way there, could we? Okay, let's hope you can have a different colour. So, you, so you've got, let me make that same, trying to make the same size but um, different colour. Yeah, so put another text box in, just showing you how to think about an exam question here. So what, yeah, you can um, always draw things okay, to help you in exam or draw your own little, little sketch to help you. Always encourage um, in exams, if, if you have trouble explaining it in words, always draw a diagram, okay, to, to explain it because the marks can honestly does say um, annotated, so that means um, with words, annotated diagram for full marks, okay, so you can understand what you're talking about. Okay, so equal and opposite false. Force drives plane forwards. That when, you, when they first sort of turn the engines on the runway and, and the plane sort of goes along, drives plane forwards. Okay. So this is known as thrust. Somebody gets thrust. Okay, thrust from the engines. Okay, so. Yeah, you get the equal and opposite force because so force still is coming in pairs. You've got an equal and opposite force here. Okay, so another question. So you sort of thing to think about. Okay, so what's to do yourself? Give it a pause in a moment. So a book is resting on a table. Which of the following is true? So you've got A. The book exerts a force on the table, and the table exerts equal force back on the book. There are no forces acting because there is no movement. Well, the book exerts a force on the table and the table exerts a greater force back on the book. Or D, the only forces acting on the book are its weight and gravity. So I'll give you a second there to, uh, to pause. Okay, so I'll go for it. So, again, so it's always good actually, yeah, if you haven't got something right, it's to actually, uh, actually write in the correct answer if you haven't got it right. Okay, so... The first one, the first one read out. You probably could hear it as reading it out. I think that's that's pretty much like the other examples, isn't it? Is uh, which is following is true. So the first one is true. 
the book exerts a force on the table and the table exerts an equal force back on the book. Okay, and we've got questions answers as to why these are not the right answer. Since there are no forces acting because there's no movement, that's a very common misconception. There's no forces acting. So gravity always acts on objects if you're on Earth. Okay, so there must be some force. Yeah, gravity is always putting you down. Even if it's something set on the table, there's always a force of gravity. See, the book exerts a force on the table, and the table exerts a greater force back on the book. If the, this is quite a funny one. If the table exerts a greater force on the book, the book will fly in the air. That's true. You always think about uh, common sense when you're writing things. You think, yeah, the, if the table exerts a force on the book, it'll fly in the air. Indeed, the only forces that are acting on the book are its weight and gravity. Again, if if it was the only one was the weight and gravity, it would fall through the table. Okay, so let's go back to that picture of the book. Okay. So if you had that picture of the book here, they've only shown two pairs. If you were to show that on a diagram, um, let's draw some diet, let's draw some arrows. Okay, so we could actually add some more to this text box. Okay, it's very it's very much like this one. Okay, but we'll draw it on the book so to uh, to show you. So this is the normal force. Okay. And let's uh, let's do it. Copy this so you get the same size arrow. It's a, it's a good thing to do. Get the same size or something. Okay, so you put it here, but obviously we change its direction. Okay, so it's the same size. Kind of made it a little bit longer there, accidentally. So it's the same size. Okay, and that's its uh, uh, weight. And that's a force due to gravity. Okay, so the weight of an object is its force due to gravity in newtons. Okay, so we do force diagrams in another video. A bit more detail on that. Okay, so weight force due to gravity in newtons. Okay, this is a normal force. This is also in newtons. Okay, that's another thing to remember. Okay, is that forces are always in newtons. So we'll come back to it. About newtons. So you can see here, okay, so you've got a tug of war going on. Okay, this time, so pulling force this way, 200 newtons. And newtons is the unit of force. We're pulling force this way, 100 newtons. So the resultant, so the result means the overall force to the left, because this is bigger, 100 newtons. That's the resultant force, okay? It's a bit like here as well. So resultant force is a single force that represents the opposite forces acting together. So it's like the overall force or the net force. Okay, the overall force. It's calculated by finding yet the difference between quantities of forces, it's as easy as that, acting in opposite directions. So you've got our force pairs and we just work out what's overall. Okay, I'm about forces. So bigger force, 100 newtons, smaller force, 60 newtons on the truck. Okay, so it's probably resistance, so um, of the types of friction, putting it back and going forward 100 newtons. So I think we can work out overall, overall 40 newtons to the right. Okay, so it's just 100 minus 60. Okay, so I hope we've learned something today. We look at this, let's just go over our learning aims. What contacts and non-contact forces are? Yeah, you can go back. If you don't remember that, you can go rewind. Re 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 Exclamation! Different contacts, non-contact forces. Yeah, magnetism, gravity, and friction. Yeah, magnetism between magnets, gravity um, on the Earth or any sort of large body like the Moon, and friction. So uh, that's, that's the overall thing. Examples of questions and oh, well, forces with live answers. So you see me go go through a few few questions there. So just yeah, just a little reminder. Okay, so we wrote them all here. So this is a good slide to make it a bit bigger. So you'd like to pause on and to copy down. So copy down these diagrams. Okay, so it's good. Yeah, it's a good one to um, to look at. Okay, so yeah, obviously you can rewind the video and go back and have a look and look at all the answers. Okay, so and look at all the um, all the questions and answers. And yeah, if you didn't write get it correct, you can write the right answers. Okay, so thank you for um, 
Thank you for listening to the video. Um, hope to see you on a different video soon. And, and I just can say thank you for joining and goodbye.